Liberty Nation. Truth is making a comeback. Hello and welcome to Liberty Nation TV. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. Now, if you're as dumbfounded as me regarding the release, exoneration, the letting off scot-free of Jesse Smollett after the uh, supposed hate crime hoax that he's perpetuated on the American people, you're not alone, but you are in the right place. Joining us today, we have Scott D. Cosenza, legal affairs editor for Liberty Nation, and he's here to help us unravel the mystery of what's happening. Thanks for being here, Scott. Thank you, Mark. How you feel, Jesse? Well, Scott, first things first. You feel good? Can you give us a basic outline of the, the legal machinations? You look good that took place to make this happen. Do I think justice was served? No. It's not easy because we don't really have a, a, a strong understanding. The only thing that we know for sure is that first assistant Cook County State's Attorney, whose name is Joseph Maggots, um, approved and, and put into motion what we saw today, which was the on an emergency basis, which seems uh, beyond the pale in terms of the need for an emergency order. But in any case, on an emergency basis, they went into a Chicago courtroom and asked that the charges against the 16 count uh, felony indictment against Jussie Smollett uh, be dismissed and the case be put under seal. And that uh, the only thing that would happen to him uh, that was that he would have to forego his um, his bond payment of ten thousand dollars. And that's it. Um. So in pure legal language, does this mean that according to the court and according to the uh, Mr. Maggots? Yes. Innocent of the 16 charges? Does it actually mean he's innocent of those charges? Okay, so it's only rare that any court anywhere would ever declare someone innocent. Typically, courts declare people guilty or not guilty if, if they have a criminal charge and that charge goes uh, to its conclusion. So. Right. I don't mean to be pedantic about it, but it is an important distinction. There's no innocence involved here, and there is no not guilty involved here. All that's happened is that the state of Illinois has dropped the charges. There's been uh, no no discussion or, or any kind of inference that he is innocent. And in fact, uh, Mr. Maggots, uh, the uh, first assistant state's attorney, has said he believes that he's guilty. So he believes that Jussie Smollett did, in fact, commit these hoax crimes. That's not been disputed by the by the state's attorney's office. All they're saying is that even though they did commit the crimes, the forfeiting of the money and the I think it was 18 hours or 16 hours of um, uh, community service time spent with Jesse Jackson's Chicago uh, group that um, uh, basically does a lot of, uh, I, I think, a lot of kind of race hustling and race hate and ginning up more race hatred for a person like Jussie Smollett to then sort of feed off of. Um, that is what led to the, the dropping of the charges. Not any finding that he was innocent uh, or or not guilty even. That that almost blows me away. I mean, why is him... He had to give up his bail bond, which I, I believe it's $10,000 on a $100,000 thing. Uh, it's $10,000 as I understand it. And he surrendered that. Uh, okay. Why that? Why that would be uh, okay? Uh, Mr. Maggots hasn't said. Um, you know, lots of people get their charges dropped uh, for doing things like community service, but usually that's for in exchange for community service, uh, and and it wouldn't allow somebody like it has allowed Jussie to come out with a press conference and say he's been truthful since day one. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. There's been no allocution or apology or anything uh, that you might you might think would be commensurate with what he put the city through to say nothing of the nation. Yeah, uh, the police chief and uh, Rahm Emanuel both seem quite incensed by this. Uh, yeah, I, I watched that press conference and, and think that incensed is about the right word. Because of the judge's decision, none of that evidence will ever be made public. <laughs> none of it. Uh, while they didn't seem to take the state's attorney, Kim Fox, or Mr. Her, her deputy, Mr. Maggots, to task for their decisions. It's so many of these uh, stories seem to say a decision was made or charges were dropped. No, Mr. Maggots dropped the charges. That's the appropriate way to discuss this. And if we want to find out what happened, he's the one to go to. So I want to thank my legal counsel from the bottom of my heart. And I would also like to thank 
the state of Illinois for attempting to do what's right. Mark, Tina Chen is the name of Michelle Obama's former chief of staff, and she intervened. Uh, there's some connection there with the Smollett uh, family members, maybe Mr. Smollett himself. Uh, you know, uh, you were talking uh, off mic about whether there was some connection with Kamala Harris. And, you know, there's no connection there with the with Chen directly, I think. But uh, Jussie Smollett has been with Kamala Harris at campaign rallies. He's a very popular leftist uh, progressive. And Ms. Chen contacted Kim Fox. This kind of ex parte communication is highly inappropriate and responded to that communication along with another communication, Mark. And I, I don't mean to use the word communication. These are text messages and we have yeah. the text messages. Uh, they've been released uh, where she basically says she's going to try to move the case away from the Chicago police into the FBI and, and worked to try to get that to happen. There's usually a reason. Well, one would presume that there's a reason which makes somebody make this decision which makes an individual make a decision yes sir we have no idea what that reason is what what that single reason or combination of reasons is we uh jesse smollett is a well-liked uh black man who's a homosexual in chicago democrat party politics who's friends with the obamas uh, that seems to me to be the reason <laughs> unfortunately that that's the saddest reason that i could possibly think of I really think that Jussie Smollett's own words may hang him here. And what I mean by that is he has said he's told the truth from the beginning. I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I've been accused of. Everything we know about this case suggests that that's a lie. I mean, the only thing that I could make me more sure about is if I had actually been standing on the street corner when the fake attack didn't happen. Uh, you weren't out for a subway that night, huh? <laughs> right, right. Not having been there where the attack didn't happen, I can't say uh, for sure. But absent that, everything we know seems to say that that, that he's a liar, um, that he yeah. ginned up this attack. And so um, I would almost, I mean, these federal prosecutors are human. And when they see somebody who's gotten out of charges they probably should have been guilty of, who set the nation up for this, um, you know, I mean, really... It, turn everything on its head in terms of the, the, the upheaval that this attack yeah. caused. This wasn't just some small incident between a couple people. You know, this had wide reaching ramifications. Mr. Smollett is still saying that he is innocent, still running down the Chicago Police Department. How dare him? How dare him? It had a, an in, international ramifications because it, it impacts America's reputation overseas. The, the idea that uh, a, a gay black actor can be uh, attacked in the wee small hours of Chicago by by MAGA hat wearing racists. Um, That's right. That damages America's reputation. And so with with that in mind, so I think that because of that, that it may actually bring federal charges uh, more to bear. I, I think the federal charges are more likely to be brought to bear because of that. When you send these powders through the mail, uh, it, it's a big deal in terms of the, yeah, sure. the, you know, their investigation. And it's not it's not just some like prank phone call that's sort of uh, dealt with quickly. Um, you know, it, it's a very serious crime in terms of just the reaction when the when the crime is reported. So we're going to have to see. But but uh, my crystal ball says federal charges will come. I don't think he was smart enough to uh, to. I think he did do that crime. So let me just go on record as saying that I think he sent that letter that fake anthrax letter or had it sent on his behalf and I also think that he wasn't a smart enough criminal to do so in a way that didn't lead back to him so uh, we'll see what happens is it possible that the 16 count charges have been dropped to make way for the federal charges certainly not this has nothing to do with that all right last question for you Scott there's the the two Nigerian brothers I believe you your you Sundarios know. yes okay now, they've confessed to the police that they were paid to fake the hate crime against Jesse Smollett. Now, what happens to them now? Are they to be, will they be charged with making up a story? As they were represented by counsel, almost surely they made their statements uh, under an agreement that gave them use immunity from them and that the prosecutors would not be able to, and in fact, probably sign an agreement that guaranteed they wouldn't be prosecuted as long as they were forthright and honest with prosecutors. That's what's typically done with minor players uh, in a crime. And in this crime, uh, from the best of our ability, we know that uh, Jussie 
Smollett was the mastermind um, and the Osandarios were the minor player. So I wouldn't expect to see further criminal liability from them uh, on the on the state side. It is possible, given their involvement in the in the hoax hate crime at the state level, they were also involved in the hoax anthrax letter, in which case uh, we may see more criminal liability from them. But uh, but not from the state level, I don't think. Okay, Scott, thank you ever so much for joining us here uh, and explaining the the ins and outs of what really must be one of the most bizarre legal decisions this year, um, possibly even last year as well. Uh, thank you at home for, for watching. Um, make sure to tune into LibertyNation.com. We've got podcasts, radio, more TV, a great range of articles. You can, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.